Hi, this is your host Subhim Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of T3M or topic of the month and the topic of this month is security and compliance and today we have with us Arthur Tide, SVP of Business Development at CIQ Incorporated. Arthur, it's great to have you on the show. Ah, thank you. It's a, it's a, it's an honor. It's my honor actually. Uh, looking at your career graph, uh, the the places you work and your whole experience with open source, Linux, and security. So I'm looking forward to this discussion because uh, the first question that I'm going to throw at you, which is going to be interesting, is that um, the security has changed a lot. Uh, early days uh, in the traditional idea or whatever the you call it, legacy IT word. Somebody will write the application, you sell it, somebody else will buy it, download it, install it, manage it yourself. We used to have sysadmins and all, they still are there. Uh, security was always an afterthought. Security was always someone else's problem. But in the cloud native cloud country world, it has changed. Security has become a priority. Developers, of course, the labels change, DevOps, DevSecOps, mm. SREs. But it is, you know, security is moving into their own pipeline, is shifting left. So if I ask you, how have you seen the evolution of security over time, uh, especially in this, you know, whole cloud native cloud centric world? Boy, that's a big question. Uh, I'll take a crack at it, though. Um, I think you made a great point, actually, um, in framing the question in the sense that um, early approaches to security involved a lot of point solutions. You had to have network security, workstation security. It's like one thing after another. And after a while, you started to stack these things up. And it became very uh, difficult to manage. Um, and of course, you know, that, that actually creates a wider attack surface, which is not what you want. Um, one of the evolutions of security that I think is really important is just the cloud, right? Because the cloud has allowed um, the, uh, you know, providers like AWS, Oracle, Google, and so forth to really centralize a lot of the security offerings. So I, I think that cloud security is, in general, better security than most of what I see on-prem. I mean, obviously, you want to protect your network, you want to protect your endpoints, and no solution is 100% complete. But I do think that cloud migrations represent a more uh, effective initial security posture, and then you can build around that. Um, another big change which sort of goes hand in hand with that is the notion of zero trust, right? So the concept of zero trust basically boils down to never trust, always verify. So any user, service, device, anything on your network should not be trusted no matter where it sits, internal or external. Um, so seeing, uh, Seeing people sort of look at their uh, look at their security postures from a zero trust perspective, I think has produced um, you know much better environments for the enterprise. That's for sure. We do talk a lot about hey, security is becoming a priority, but we continue to see a lot of breaches. You know, of course, almost on a weekly basis, because also security is not a product; is is a process. Uh, uh, the good guys, you have to be right 100% of the time. The bad guys have to be right only once. And then in the cloud native world, there are so many different ways things can be compromised. Uh, configuration can be, of course, bugs are part of software development. Social engineering is there. Uber is a good example. Patching, not patching a code which is already patched. So when we look at the, the reality versus when we talk about, hey, you know what? Yeah, security is a priority. When you, when you talk to companies, customers, how much do you see that these processes are actually being followed, that companies are embracing these practices? Uh, versus, of course, everybody wants security, but do you see that, hey, companies are still not taking it uh, uh, you know, seriously? They do want, but they don't have process in place? Or you think, no, everybody is fully aware of security. Everybody has everything in place. What are you seeing in reality? Honestly, um, and, and this is just my, my opinion, of course, um, I think enterprises, for the most part, are getting it together because enterprises are really driven by, um, you know, compliance and regulatory issues. So they've got data privacy and protection stuff that they have to deal with. They have um, a whole raft of cybersecurity regulations that that are often required because they have a fiduciary responsibility to protect, you know, money, intellectual property, stuff like that. So. Um, and then record keeping regulations. So at the enterprise, um, I often see very comprehensive, well thought out security strategies. 
Now, as you work your way down to smaller businesses, you know, uh, it gets less, uh, it, get, it gets less comprehensive. Um, but that said, um, security, um, you know, patching updates, maintenance of systems, all of those problems still exist. Um, and they're not really getting any easier. And I can give you an example recently that impacted our company uh, significantly in terms of an opportunity, if you will. Um, so uh, Red Hat and IBM chose to end of life CentOS. And there were very big enterprises running CentOS as part of their HPC environments. Now, they would be doing things like airflow simulations, engine testing, um, uh, vehicle crash analysis, all kinds of uh, simulations work, which generate a lot of intellectual property. And then all of a sudden, one day they wake up and all of their operating systems and their clusters would not pass a compliance audit. So that's a risk to them. Um, that's actually where Rocky Linux came from. Uh, our CEO was the uh, co-founder of CentOS, as you know, and he went out on the net and he was like, hey, um, you know, let's let's essentially engineer the next generation of CentOS. And that's where Rocky comes from. So even an enterprise that has really checked all the boxes in terms of having compliant operating systems and complying with, you know, various cybersecurity frameworks like PCI DSS and ISO 27001 and so forth, you can wake up one day and the world can be different. Just like you said, a hacker only has to be right once. There's always going to be a risk. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be very difficult to fight against a zero day. But the things that you do have control over, such as patching, um, best practices, that's, that's really where you start. You get that right, and you're 80% of the way there. That's where I also want to go with you is also that if we just, like, look at the last six months or last one year, um, traditional IT versus cloud-centric, cloud-based, all tech companies today, every company has to be a tech company if you want to survive. Uh, what are some of the major security concerns that you are you're seeing, which are either still there or new threats that are there uh, that, you know, I mean, of course, there are a lot of other things that keep you awake at night, but when you look at these, you're like, hey, these, these are still concerns that are there. Um, probably patching you know, security patching and updates. Um, that is, you know, it's one of these things where it's a well understood problem that everybody has had. And uh, not that many companies are, are, are really on top of. So, um, you know, if you've got, if you've got an unsupported OS, you know, and you see that everywhere, if you've got an unsupported OS, if you've got, um, you know, scenarios where you're using software from I don't want to say dodgy sources, but you know you should know who you're doing business with. There's a huge amount of software. There's a huge amount of shadow IT out there. Um, that remains a problem. And then I guess um, you know in the development space, you know you're still looking at a lot of unsigned packages. You're still looking at you know scenarios where package verification isn't done. Um, yeah. Um, You'll have users who uh, go to uh, unsigned, unauthorized, or unvetted package repositories to fill out some blank spaces on a server. Uh, that's a lot of the administrative stuff that I see that, that, that generates risk. It doesn't necessarily always mean there's going to be a breach, but kind of back to your initial point, it's like, you know, the, we want to reduce the attack surface, not expand it. So, um, you know, if we apply zero trust principles, then everything needs to be verified and everything needs to be authenticated. Perfect segue to the next question, which is like, we talked about the problem area. Uh, of course, technological solutions are there, but as we have seen in many cases that, you know, patches are there, but they are never applied, you know? So, and the whole documentation is there, but there is still misconfiguration or you turn something on, but you never turn it off. Uh, zombie APIs are there, a lot of applications that, you know, are running you don't need anymore, uh, which, you know, makes, you know, bring us to the point of, you know, when we look at things like Zero Trust or uh, the whole cultural movement is also needed where you need to approach security not as a problem of a specific team, but across the organization. So uh, are you seeing any cultural changes within organizations also where they are looking at it, not just, you know, as, as a product, but as a process that has to be implemented across the organizations or not? And if yes, 
how much? Well, we're definitely seeing that, um, you know, in the sense that most users these days, and by users, I mean non-IT users, you know, people in the business think the CFO, the CEO, the people who have to implement services, you know, they're now thinking of security. Now, typically those um, conversations start in the compliance space. It's like, oh, I'm a bank. I've got a fiduciary responsibility to protect financial data, or, oh, I'm a healthcare provider and I've got to deal with HIPAA and, and other similar laws around the world. Um, because, you know, again, as, as we become more global, these things, you know, the, the opportunity for, um, uh, the opportunity for dealing with different regulatory frameworks gets bigger. So people are talking about it now because there's a cost associated associated with it. Luckily though, um, the flexibility that you have these days, um, especially in cloud environments is significantly better than it was before. And I'll give you an example. Um, in the past, if you wanted to roll out patches or you had some kind of a, an audit that you needed to go through and you needed to do that to your production environment, you had a couple of choices and they almost always impacted production. And if you're, if you were a completely on-prem organization, that could be a problem, right? It's not like you have a duplicate of your infrastructure that you can go experiment on. Today, though, uh, in most of the cloud environments, you can set up a production environment and essentially mirror it. So you can, um, you know, do hot switchovers to vetted databases. You can apply patches. You can switch them over. The, the opportunity to do, the opportunity to do best practices in basic IT today is much more evolved than it was like 10 to 15 years ago. And the users now, they've got a bigger toolbox. So uh, so I see that, you know, and I see that driving cloud migrations. Uh, I see that driving decisions based on operating systems. And I have another example there. Um, Rocky Linux, for example, um, is at nearly 40% penetration in government. And when we talk to government users, they're like, we want to run Rocky Linux, and there's a variety of reasons that they want to go that way for the same reasons they were running CentOS. But um, we want to run identical platforms on the cloud and on prem so that we've got consistency across our environment because the enemy of security is complexity. So they want simple, they want what they're running on prem, they want that on the cloud, they want a very strict set of controls. Uh, yeah. So we're seeing uh, an evolution towards simplicity and elegance, and that's good to see. I mean, that's that makes our lives easier, and, and it makes our data safer. We're also seeing a lot of cost cutting going on. You know, layoffs are happening. Actually, those layoffs have more to do with the over hiring during the COVID time, where everybody was hiring almost everybody. So it may not be actual layoffs; maybe just you know going back to their actual sizes. But if you do look at uh, this cost cutting. Do you see there is going to be any impact on, uh, I mean, as much as we have broken down silos, the fact is that there will always be specialized team. There will always be folks who are interested in networking, folks in security. These cannot be generalized. So uh, do you think there will be any impact on security, team, any impact of CISO's budgets? Or you're like, no, these are the teams which will not have any impact from this cost cutting. The Google layoffs recently were a great example. Um, they let go of tremendous people. Um, yes, there will definitely be an impact w without question. You, you start, you start cutting, you start cutting bone and, you know, you can't lift as much, you know, so, um, so that's definitely going to be a risk. I, I think companies are wise in the sense that they, um, that they can mitigate it in a couple of ways. One, they can be aware of the, of the, uh, compliance and regulatory obligations that they have, and then, you know, make their budgeting decisions appropriately. They can also cut costs in other ways. You know, for example, um, if you are paying a huge, you know, licensing fee for a bunch of enterprise Linux machines, look around, you know, shop around, find a better deal. Um, you know, um, Check out CIQ. We do support for Rocky Linux. Um, we also support the RESF. So we can tremendously cut somebody's support budget. And if we can cut your support budget, that means you can hang on to those data security guys. So, 
Yeah, you know, companies are going to have to be creative as they trim down, but they've always faced that problem. Since you talked about Rocket Linux, I also want to talk about, you know, uh, CIQ's solutions. Of course, you have touched upon that a couple of times, but I want to just kind of summarize is that um, how were your solutions helping customers improve their security posture while, as you talked about, you know, you know, keeping a tab on their cost and other things? At a high level, uh, well, yeah, I could start with Rocky Linux. Um, you know, Rocky Linux was was created by uh, one of the co-founders of CentOS, who has a background working uh, in uh, U.S. national labs. So think research, biopharma, um, very intellectually pro intellectual property heavy uh, compliant, uh, secure environment. So, uh, CIQ approaches Rocky Linux from a security first perspective, um, both on-prem and in the cloud. So, uh, for example, we are sponsoring FIPS 140-3 certification, uh, for Rocky Linux, and we're going to uh, give that into the community. We also build out a portfolio of high performance options that are container driven. Um, that are also highly secure. They are policy driven. There is no root access from within the containers. Um, our, our security team has taken a real hard look at where, you know, like I, I look, I, I guess an example I could give is if I were say a major uh, electronics manufacturer and I wanted to protect my designs, am I gonna run it in a, uh, in a container system that doesn't run secure, that runs as the root user open? No, I'm not gonna do that. Am I going to allow somebody to pull stuff randomly, you know, pull, uh, you know, containers out of the Docker, uh, out of the Docker hub repository randomly? No, I'm not, you know, I'm gonna have control over all those things. So um, whether you're running uh, Rocky Linux or Aptainer, um, you're gonna be running in a, in a, you can lock that environment down uh, and you can lock it down uh, easily and you can do it in a way that's gonna protect your primary compliance objectives. Now, you know, again, that can be data privacy, that can be uh, cybersecurity regulations relative to protecting financial data, or maybe you just have record keeping obligations, but uh, we build certifications into these products that all lead to auditability. So I guess the final example I can give there is if CIQ does a, uh, let's say we certify a piece of hardware for Rocky Linux, all of that certification data can contribute to a positive score on a compliance audit. So we're, we're very security focused. What is your advice for, for companies so that they can at least there are some processes in place to improve their security posture also embrace this whole idea of you know security is a process not a product you have to be right all the time where the bad guys will have to be right only once so so just just give them some idea or advice on how they can improve their security invest in your people get you know invest in your people so uh, make sure that they are up to date, that they're trained, set aside some money to make sure everybody has certifications. Um, you know, look at it as a, um, don't see it as just a cost center. Um, look at it as something that is critical to protect it. I mean, I'll give you an example. Um, if, if I'm a business and I'm writing a contract with a potential customer or a partner or something like that, I'm probably not skimping on the lawyers. So don't skimp on the IT, invest in your people. The better your people, the better your security. Arthur, thank you so much for taking time out today and um, you know, for such great insights, you know, uh, and of course your advice also investing in people and how companies can improve their security in these you know, tough economic times. Thanks for all those insights. And uh, as we discussed earlier before the interview that I look forward to ha having you again on the show and have more discussions about security, open source, and a lot of other topics. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed it immensely. This has been an honor. Uh, look, looking forward to future discussions.